In this video, we're going to discuss atomic emission and absorption, and how emission from molecules is different from emission from atoms. For our purposes, let's start by talking about light. And light will behave as an oscillating electric field. So light, which is just electromagnetic radiation, has a frequency at which the oscillations occur. One of two things is possible. Either that frequency of that light will be equal to some fundamental frequency in our matter, and that condition will be called resonance. And when resonance occurs, light can be absorbed by the matter and is absorbed by the matter. Alternately, if the frequency of light is not equal to any fundamental frequency in the matter, this leads to transparency or non-resonant behavior where light will not be absorbed or emitted by the matter. Let's now look at the hydrogen atom emission spectrum. I'm sure you've seen this before. If not, open up your general chemistry textbook. This spectrum shows four spectral lines in the visible region, meaning that there are four fundamental frequencies of the matter that are resonant with the light that is now being emitted. So, as I'm sure you've seen, we can draw an energy level diagram that will explain these emissions. And for our purposes, we're going to need several energy levels of the atom. So n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5, n equals 6. Of course, there are more of these energy levels, but we don't need them. And for example, the emission that leads to the red line at 650 nanometers, or 6,500 angstroms, is the transition that involves the change in the electron cloud from the n equals 3 to n equals 2 state. And that leads to a red line emission. The most violet of the lines, or the highest energy of the lines, is the one that occurs where there's a resonance between the n equals 6 and n equals 2 state of the hydrogen atom electron cloud. In all of these cases, we have emission because the cloud, the electron cloud, loses energy, thereby releasing light. Absorbance, or absorption, is simply the opposite process. Imagine if we had a ground state hydrogen atom in the n equals 1 ground state. Absorption would happen if there would be light with exactly enough energy to cause the mixing of the n equals 1 and n equals 2 state. In this case, that light would have a, this, the precisely correct frequency to cause the n equals 1 electron cloud, perhaps 1s, to slowly, over 100,000 oscillations of electric field, become a 2p or 2s electron cloud. Now, if the frequency of the light were insufficient, we see that there would be no absorption of this light. There would be no transition in the electron cloud. Similarly, and perhaps more interestingly, if the energy of the light or the frequency of the light were too large, once again, there would still be no resonance when we would not have a transition of the electron cloud. Only when there is this precise resonance or frequency matching, where the frequency of the light is equal to the frequency of the matter, do we get absorption. Another way of writing this is that the change in energy of the light must also be equal to the change in energy of the matter, which in this case is the change in energy of the atom. And the change in energy of the light is hc over the wavelength of the light. So we see that absorption and emission both stem from a resonance process, a process by which light is given off or absorbed according to this resonance condition. So the question is, why doesn't all light get absorbed? And as we said, the only reason why light is absorbed is if there is a precise frequency matching. And so we see with atoms in particular that what we're going to get is we're going to get a spectrum that is going to have very few lines. If we look at the ground state 
absorption spectrum, we can see that there will be very few lines in the spectrum. And we'll draw the spectrum over here, wavelength and absorbance over here, and we'll get three lines corresponding to the three different possible absorptions. The emission spectrum will look just the same. So the question now becomes, what happens in molecules? Well, in molecules, something very interesting happens. In molecules, if we take our molecule and we absorb energy from the ground state, which we'll call S0 here, to the first excited state, S1, there are now multiple pathways by which this energy can be emitted or given off from the molecule. One way is simply to have the emission of exactly the same frequency light. In general, for molecules, this doesn't happen. And the reason this doesn't happen is because there are other vibrational states accessible to these species. So let's draw the molecule. This time, here's our ground electronic state S0, our excited electronic state S1. But let's also draw in all the different vibrational states of S0 and all the different vibrational states of S1. So these are your vibrational excited states of your ground and first excited state. Now, if we look at the absorption that happens, there are actually a couple of pathways by which this light can now be given off from the matter. Pathway number one, we can have a relaxation transition. Relaxation just means heat. And so heat is given off as the vibrational energy is given off back down to the ground state. And now a photon can be emitted. But notice here, H nu emitted is going to be lower in energy than H nu absorbed. This process is called fluorescence and leads to a photon of lower energy, lower frequency, and larger wavelength than the photon that's absorbed. Another thing that could happen, interestingly, is an internal conversion leading to full relaxation back down to the ground state, meaning that all light is given off as heat. So this has been a little bit of an introduction of absorption and emission. Hope you found it useful.